Hi, this is Tony Preckwinkle, President of the Cook County Board of Commissioners, and this is another Transportation Tuesday episode. Our guest is Jennifer Sis Killen, who is Assistant Superintendent of the Cook County Department of Transportation and Highways. We're going to talk about CREATE, which is a public-private partnership to support the rail industry. But before we do that, Sis, I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself. So you're like the first deputy in the department, right? Yes, ma'am. I am the first female deputy superintendent for the Department of Transportation and Highways in its 100 plus year history and another series of firsts when I was down at the University of Illinois obtaining my degree in civil engineering I was only one of four females in my class at the time so uh, one of few females in a very heavily male dominant industry. Okay did you always know you wanted to be an engineer? I knew I wanted to have something to do with engineering at the time. I didn't even know what engineering was. I was fascinated with construction. When we would be in the car, I would always ensure I was on the side of the car to peek at the construction that was going out the window and to be on the other side if I wasn't coming home. I loved watching projects transform communities. I loved to watch the intricacies of construction taking place, and I knew that that was a path that I wanted to pursue. Okay, what are we doing in the Department of Transportation to encourage um, young people, particularly young women, to go into engineering? There is a large focus on STEM education right now. Many of our staff members on their own personal time also engage in career fairs or STEM education opportunities at local community schools. We're also taking advantage of opportunities within the CREATE program actually to go into community schools and teach youth what career opportunities are out there for them and ensuring that there is a pathway for all youth to pursue this very much needed um, career pathway, but especially for women. You don't see a lot of women in technical fields. I think the dominance of math and science is something that kind of moves them away from it. Say, this is a career where we need to have diversity of thought and input to make sure the solutions that we as government are bringing forward are inclusive of all the needs of the people we serve. All right, so CREATE is this public-private partnership that involves the rail industry and government. Who are the partners? This is a first-of-its-kind public-private partnership that includes the U.S. Department of Transportation, the Illinois Department of Transportation, Chicago Department of Transportation, Cook County, and six of the seven Class I railroads that operate in this region, as well as two passenger railroads. Our two passenger railroads are Metra and Amtrak, and the Class I railroad that comprises Union Pacific, CSX, Norfolk Southern, Canadian National, Canadian Pacific, and the Illinois Harbor Belt. And Burlington Northern Santa Fe. And the Burlington Santa Northern Santa Fe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that railroad includes Great Northern and Northern Pacific, which went through St. Paul, Minnesota, where I grew up. So those are the railroads that I know mm -hmm. the best. So it's a public-private partnership. It includes the rail industry and government. Yes. What's the purpose again? The purpose is to come up with efficient solutions to help move freight through our region. We are the freight hub of the nation, and each one of those railroads has difficulty operating in it due to some physical constraints that our region has. All right, and we're trying through CREATE to address those physical constraints. Yes, we are trying to eliminate the conflicts that occur between the railroads themselves and also eliminate the amount of gate downtime that someone may see on a bike or in a car. We're all familiar with the gates coming down usually as we're trying to get to work or to you know, a family event or sporting event. So we're all familiar with, with freight, but what CREATE does is that it helps speed up the trains as they move through our region to reduce that gate downtime and make sure that we're providing enhanced mobility. Okay. One of the challenges we have in our region is lots of at-grade intersections, right? Yes. Uh, where rail and uh, vehicular traffic come into contact or cross over, okay? So, uh, one of the things we're doing is building flyovers, right? Yes. So tell us, tell us about the, the flyover we're involved in at 75th Street. Flyover is, is a bridge. Right. So we're looking to take one set of rails over another set of rails to eliminate that intersection or conflict that exists. We have a photo right behind us. It basically looks like a four-way stop sign. Right. This is one of the major components of the 75th Street Corridor Improvement Project where we'll build a bridge for the north-south tracks that are the top right of this graphic and building a bridge over it to eliminate that conflict. Okay, we've got four rail lines, east-west and two north-south, right? Correct. So we're going to take the two north-south ones and fly them over, bridge over the four east-west lines. Yes, it's going to be about a mile-long bridge. We have to go very, very delicately as we're moving these heavy trains up onto a bridge structure, so it's a rather lengthy structure. And what that will do is it will eliminate that basically stop sign that occurs here but we have to picture each train being two miles long. So you need to wait for two miles worth of train to go by before the next train can get the signal to go. So as we think about the delays that occur right at this location, it is the choke point for the United States. So it's the principal bottleneck 
for freight traffic in the entire country. The entire country, right here in our backyards. Now, oh, okay, and we're doing something about it. Yes, we are. What's the, the status of this project? Right now, we are in the midst of detailed design. That process began back in 2019. We have about another year left of detailed design, and the first project will go into construction in 2021. We're gonna be out here for a while. This is a nearly half a billion dollar project, 474 million. So construction will occur over the next three years, so between 2021 and 2024. Okay, now Cook County uh, has made a significant investment uh, in this project. What's the, what's the nature of that investment? Cook County, under your leadership, has made a $78 million contribution to advancing this project. The project in its entirety is over a billion dollars. We have received grant funding as a result of our direct contribution for $132 million, which allowed the $500 million project to get up and off the ground. All right, why is the rail industry so important to economic development in our region? Our region was founded on the freight industry and the businesses that have come up in support of it. We know that if we can provide support to the rail industry and keep commodities on the rail as they're intended to, we also eliminate the number of trucks that are on our roadway system, making mobility easier. We need to ensure that we're keeping goods on the modes of transportation that service them the best. And many of these car loads belong on the rail and the intent of the crate program is to make sure that it's operating efficiently and servicing the industries that it was intended to. This region has always been a transportation hub because of the lake and the river initially and uh, its central location in the country. And so it's one of the places that has always had intense rail development. And so what we're trying to do is decongest our region and make traffic flow through and within our region uh, more smoothly. Correct. In our region, the Chicago area, over 25% of the nation's freight passes through Chicago. One more time. Over 25% of the nation's freight passes through Chicago, and that is one of the key reasons why this project was being undertaken. It is the choke point for all freight. But if we think about all the freight that's going through the nation, automobiles, technology, textiles, petroleum, coal, wood, we are the hub of all of that activity, and it behooves us to ensure that we're providing the right mobility to allow those products to stay on the rail and move across the country, not just through our region. So decongesting rail also decongests our highways. Yes, it does. It's less trust, long haul truck traffic as well. What we have seen is that because of the delays that occur in Chicago, some materials may come off of the railroad and get onto a truck, and then that is what is passing through our communities on our expressways. The CREATE program with the completion of this project, we're about halfway through, construction of the 70 projects in the program right now will help to improve mobility for freight rail, for freight trucks, and then for those in passenger cars on bicycles. To accomplish that, we are hosting several networking events with our business community to ensure that we have maximum participation and opportunity to connect with some of the vendors who may want to bid on some of this work. We are also looking at this from an education perspective, and we are going into the classrooms of many of many Chicago public schools and engaging in partnerships with the Chicago Public Library Foundation to bring STEM into the classrooms, to provide additional education programs for our educators so that they too may teach STEM to their students and also allow for internship opportunities for students to come test out engineering. We want to create these pathways for jobs for the students and residents of the communities to come out and see how you can get involved in projects like this and help shape the projects that are ultimately going to improve the quality of life and mobility in your community. Okay, so young people like you who maybe didn't have role models or folks who are in the in the industry and their families or among their, their networks can, can see what, what, what this kind of career would be like. What this career would be like for them exactly. What does it look like? We've also gathered groups of professionals to come into the, into the schools. So we've worked with students as young as kindergarten up through the sixth grade to date. Uh, many of our activities had to be postponed due, in, due to current situations with the global pandemic. Right. But we hope to be back in the classrooms with them in the fall. We are partnering with the Museum of Science and Industry as well to provide fall programs for students to engage in. You don't know how to engage in a career unless it's laid out for you and you're invited in to participate and see the exciting ways that you can shape what's happening in your backyard. If it's not a career pathway, maybe you get on one of the advisory groups that help shape the different components of these projects. Stakeholder engagement is critical to the success of projects. All right, sis, if, if, if somebody's looking for information about this project, the 75th Street Project, where can they go? We have a website set up dedicated to this project, 75thsip.org, and that is where you can find out about the current project status as well as opportunities to engage in future meetings. All right. 
Well, listen, I want to thank you for coming in and sharing with us this, uh, this important project and the work that you're doing in the Department of Transportation and Highways. And thank you for joining us for Transportation Tuesday. If you want more information about the Department of Transportation and Highways, you can go to connectingcookcounty.org. Connectingcookcounty.org. Thank you.